Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, my podcast about knitting and cross stitch. Today is May 11th, 2020. There are two places that you can find me on the internet. The first is on Instagram at birch.and.lily and the second is on Ravelry at Birch and Lily. Thank you so much if you're coming and joining me for the first time, the second time, the 33rd time, <laughs> no matter what, it means so, so much to me that you come and watch my episodes every couple weeks. I did want to just put a little, I don't even know what to call it out there, saying if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. It means a lot. It gets my videos out there to everyone else so that everyone can see what I'm working on over the past couple weeks what I'm working on all the time, I guess. Um, and also, if you want to get notifications about the new videos that I put up, make sure to click that little bell down below. And yeah, let's jump into what I have been working on. I have no finished objects from the past few weeks. Why? I don't know. I just have no finished objects. So let's jump into works in progress. My first whip is in one of my favorite bags from Birch Grove with the little sloths. Uh, this is a new pair of socks that I've cast on. You've not seen these on the podcast before. I am knitting them out of Hey Sister Yarn Co. on their Alonzi base, which is a 7525. Unfortunately, Hey Sister is not dyeing yarn at the moment anymore, um, so you would be able to, you wouldn't rather be able to find this. And this is a club color, anyways. So the main color here, this cream with all sorts of pretty neutrals throughout it, is called the Brute Squad, and the mini is called Highness. So, the pattern that I have cast on is the Poet Socks. This is a pattern by Sari Norland. If you saw the Ballad Socks that I was test knitting for Sari, uh, the Poet Socks are part of that collection of socks, or sock patterns, rather. Um, so they all kind of have a little bit of the same motif in them, but different. So. Let me put this on a blocker. I think it will make it a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, so these are the Poet socks. Uh, this pattern is based off of Sari's Poet sweater. Um, this same motif runs on the sweater. Uh, I cast on 60 stitches for these. There is only one size available in this pattern, unfortunately, which is 60 stitches. Um, so that is what I did. The pattern does call for a one by one rib. I did a one by one twisted rib um, and I am knitting Magic Loop, if you can tell. Uh, that is how I knit every single one of my socks. It's my favorite way to knit is Magic Loop. Um, so yeah, 60 stitches. There's this beautiful lace pattern with um, seed stitch, absolutely beautiful. Just a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And I have completely decreased the gusset back down to the 60 stitches and now I'm just continuing to knit until I'm ready to put in the toe. See how this pattern definitely not memorizable I'm sure you can tell looking at it but it's so much fun to see everything work up I've really been enjoying working on this pair of socks I think I started these on Thursday or Friday of last week, so I haven't been working on them for that long and I've got quite a bit done. Uh, this leg here to the top of the heel flap, that's one whole pattern repeat, if that gives you a little bit of an idea how complex I guess the pattern is, but not complex at the same time. It's all very basic stitches just put together in a really pretty way. So the next project that I've been putting a lot of work into is my Summer Squirrel Cross Stitch. This is a pattern from the Blue Flower, and I have it in this pretty project bag from Pretty Southern. I love floral. Can you tell? Floral is like my favorite fabric ever. And sheep. The other one has sheep, but floral, this is my jam. 
so I am stitching this up on 40 count alabaster linen which is not the called for linen um, it was out of stock when I ordered it so I just asked um, or contacted 123 stitch and asked what they would recommend for a replacement and they recommended alabaster so I am using all of the called for threads for this project though here they are so pretty and summery kind of springy too in a way but when you see it all put together it's definitely summer so see if I can fold this fabric this is where I am Honestly, last time I showed this, I don't think, maybe I had just finished the border. I've got a lot done though, I'm quite pleased. The squirrel is, or the big squirrel, there's two squirrels, which you will have seen, because I will put, have hopefully remembered to put the pattern up for you guys. Um, but he's halfway done. I can't wait to get to the tiny squirrel with his little helmet. It looks so cute. Um, but I'm really, really, really enjoying this. It's nice to work on something small, it seems like it's flying a little bit more than all of my big projects. Not that I don't love my big projects, I do. They're really fun. But this has just been flying. I've really been enjoying it. So yeah, this is on 40 count, call four threads. I stitch on 40 count with a 28 needle. My favorite, I don't think I've ever said before, are the Pat Carson needles with the little gold heads on them. I eat through needles like nobody's business. There's something in my fingers, like the sweat from my fingers that eats through the nickel plating on needles, but I find the Pat Carson ones are the ones that last the longest for me. So the price is worth it to me because they last longer. I'm not going through like three needles per project. I can make one last. A project this size, I could probably do two this size with one needle. And my bigger projects, I maybe will go through two needles. So the price is definitely worth it to me. Um, and look at, obviously they work well because this project's fly. I guess that's more got to do with my hands than the needles. But <laughs> anyways, that is Summer Squirrel. Maybe I will have that done my next episode. I kind of highly doubt it, but it'd be cool if it was. I think I have a frame picked out for it that I've had like kicking around the house for a while. But my plan is there's a whole series of these squirrels is to have all of them done so that I can switch them out in the frame throughout the year. Um, mostly because my husband and I have this running joke going that we live in a squirrel sanctuary. Our yard is full of squirrels, so many squirrels. <laughs> and. Yeah, so we've called our house the Squirrel Sanctuary. My puppy loves it. She sits at the window and watches the squirrels. It's pretty cool. The next knitting project that I have been working on is in this bag. This is from Tiny Human Knits. I am knitting this pair of socks out of this beautiful bright, bright orange color from Hedgehog Fibers. This is their sock base in the colorway Salvador. I think their sock base is also a 75-25. Let me check. No. Oh. 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. I don't think I've ever worked with something. Well, obviously, if I've used Hedgehog before, which I have. I have worked with something that's a 90-10. But um, not in a while, that's for sure. So yeah, Hedgehog Fibers, Salvador. I am knitting a test knit for Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady. This is the pair of socks that I am working on. I think I will put these on a blocker as well. Here we go. I am knitting up this pair of socks on 2.25 millimeter needles and I cast on 64 stitches. I am knitting these for my gift box of socks. Um, most of the people that I knit socks for are actually a size eight. So I've decided this year, anything that I knit that's a gift will probably just be a size eight unless it's specifically for someone. And they'll just go in a box for me to pull out when I need a gift for someone. Um, so that is what these are going to be. So there is a 
two by two rib. It's a little bit modified just to work with the patterning on the front, which I will show you in a second. Slip stitch heel fluff and gusset. And again, I'm working towards the toe on this pair of socks. Now, if I flip this, you can see the pattern running down the front. So there's a really nice chunky cable in the middle and then these pretty little twists on either side of it. I hope it's not too hard to see. This yarn is quite bright and my camera is not liking it. <laughs> um, but there's these pretty twists running down either side of this cable in the middle. This is very easy to memorize. It's only a five row repeat. So that has been quite nice when I'm not wanting to pay too much attention to my knitting. I'm not 100% sure when Kay is releasing this pair of socks. I have to have my test knit done by the end of this month. Um, so we will see when she releases them. I don't know a name, they are unnamed yet. So once I know, I'm so sorry, my video app crashed on my phone. Okay, hopefully I'm in about the same position. I feel like it should be this way a little bit. Hmm. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Um, so like I was saying, these socks by Kay Litton. I do not know the name for them yet. I do not know the release date, but I will keep you guys updated as to both of those pieces of information as I learn them. More cross stitch. Uh, this is the only other piece of cross stitch, surprisingly, that I've been working on the past couple weeks. This is A Shepherd's Song by Plum Street Samplers. Again, pretty southern bag. This one with sheep. I saw this one and I just had to. <laughs> so once again, I am using all of the copper threads for this project. Very pretty, very prim which is totally my style. Um, very pretty. I already said that. I am not stitching this project on the called for fabric. I am stitching it on 40 Count Winter's Brew by r and &R. And this is where I am. So I carried the black border quite a bit, worked some more on the flowers, and then if you can see at the bottom, I started a sheep. He's hard to pick out because mostly what's done on him is the cream, but I have started a sheep. And fun thing now, my mom is actually working on this piece as well at the same time, so it's been fun to work on it together and I'd say we're racing, but I got a head start, so it's not really fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've both really been enjoying working on this project, and I'm very excited to see both of them done. She is stitching hers on a 16 count Ada, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see the size difference and how everything looks because of that. But yeah, that's about all I have to say. Not much. Done some work on it still enjoying it. I do wish I owned a serger so I could serge the edges of this fabric because it is definitely fraying a little bit. Um, I'll have to wait until I can go visit my mother-in-law and she can serge that for me. So I'll just have to be extra careful for the time being. And I've only worked on one other thing, surprisingly. This is not like me. <laughs> um, but it is in this beautiful bag from, I think it's Pleistra. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It'll be linked down below. Um, but this is my Northeasterly blanket. So this has definitely been what I've been putting most of my attention towards in the past couple weeks. It's just been so simple and I don't have to think, and I really like that right now. So this has been getting a lot of love, as you will see shortly. So it's too long for me to fit the whole thing in the screen now, so I think I'm just gonna kind of scroll by as I hold it up. So 
I've added quite a bit of stuff. And I'm working on this pretty fall light -like color right now. This I used in my one of my sock patterns. Um, it is from Sugar Plum Circus. I can't remember the name. It was called One Thing and now it's changed and I can't remember the new name. <laughs> um, but I'm sure if you looked on her website, you would be able to find it quite easily. Give you a closer look. Um, but yeah, it's been flying. I think I want to make it king sized if I can, which I should be able to. I have plenty of scraps and I have no issue with putting something in there twice, um, as long as they're not touching, obviously. So right now I'm kind of working on the length and getting the length of it to a king size, I think. And then I'll start working out. I in, I'm much more, or en I enjoy much more um, adding, oops, that's the back stuff to the side of a chevron than like adding new chevrons. For some reason this is more satisfying to me. So if I can get the length done then that's literally what I will be doing for the rest of the blanket and that sounds like a lot more fun to me. So that is my plan. And yeah I want king size. This is so squishy with all of the garter stitch but it's not heavy so I think it would make a beautiful king size blanket. And believe it or not that is all I've been working on the past two weeks. Seems weird, <laughs> um, but I guess I've been kind of monogamous, just really working on stuff that I love, and that's been making me very happy. So there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, I do want to say if you missed my Knit Companion review, definitely be sure to check that out. That would be the last video that I posted. I will link it down below as well. Um, I'm just kind of giving my thoughts on the app, telling you a couple of my favorite things. Um, so definitely check that out if you are interested in what the Knit Companion app has to offer. Yeah, other than that, I hope you're enjoying the beautiful springy weather. I hope it's getting warm where you are. I hope you're getting your plants out. I think I should be able to plant all of my stuff by the end of this week, so I'm really excited for that. I started a lot of seeds this year for the very first time, and I just want to get them outside so that they'll grow more, because it's really cool and it's really exciting <laughs> to me. I, I guess when you are stuck inside a lot, things like that that maybe weren't exciting before are now exciting, because it's a reason to get outside. <laughs> but yeah, that is all I have to talk about this week. Take care and I will see you again in two weeks for another podcast episode. Bye!